Welcome to From the Wings. Today, I'm very excited to be at Bob Jones University and have a guest with me, Darren Lawson. Is, is there anything so you can tell our people out there who might want to audition mm -hmm. or might not understand why they don't get cast? Mm -hmm. What do you look for at auditions? Um, I'm looking for a great singing voice, but really big on mine is the ability to act. So I don't want someone, what we call park and bark, where they just come out and they sing, but they can't bring the character to life. So I'm always making notes on my audition sheets about their acting ability. And so that's very important to me. Uh, again, I'm also looking at the interpersonal right. connection. How you, the chemistry. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, so those are the things that I'm looking for. And they've got seven minutes to sell me on their ability to act and yeah. their ability to, to sing. And it's an interesting process. So, and so I'm making copious notes. And then eventually I'm down to putting stars by the ones that I really like, and then eventually a number one and a number two right. by my top two choices. Do you call them back then, ever? Typically or? not. Okay. Um, I, they, they came, they, they did what they could do, and, and then I make yeah. it. And so then I'll contact the, my first option, and if something doesn't work out, or from scheduling or whatever, I, I also have a number two that I you know, would okay. be happy with right. either one. That's kind of the process, yeah. So if you have two people that you feel like, I know what they, they want to know. I know. How, what do you do? How yeah. do you, <laughs> heads? You, usually my notes on the acting ability pl come into play okay. there. It's right. like, this, they both were equal singers, but I felt like this one um, just had more to offer in terms of convincing me uh, of the character that they, they were singing in the song. So that typically will tilt it a little bit. And I'm just like, I'd rather have a really, really good singer and a really fantastic actor, um, you know. And, and the nice thing about going to New York to do audition is you, you end up splitting hairs like that because really all of them are superb. I think, honestly, that one of the most encouraging things that I've heard you say is for those people who are wondering why they don't get cast, you need to understand that even professional people don't get cast sometimes. So it's, you, you have a play that only has one lead role mm -hmm. and only one person can be that. And so you don't feel like it's necessarily that you mm -hmm. didn't have talent. There might not have just been a connection or... And it was who came and auditioned for the, 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 the partner role for that. So in other words, oh, mm -hmm. you know, oh, I, this was, she was fantastic, but I... I it doesn't seem like the two of them would work well together. Right. It, but in another situation, I would say, I would pick that person because they were better fit with the other. Right. And it's hard. I, I had um, an auditionee who flew from Hawaii <gasps> to New York, came to New York, came to the audition with her little roller bag. She sang, and then she went back to the airport and she flew back to Hawaii. That, that was a big commitment, um, and she didn't get the part. And then you felt terrible. Well, I, ultimately, no. it's, not, it's, not <laughs> like, it's not like, who flew the furthest, you know? Uh, okay, you get the role. Right. Uh, you know, I appreciate it. She wanted it so badly. I, I appreciate her commitment, but it ended up going to someone else. Yeah. Um, so that, that, to me, was like that person wins the gold star for right. most dedicated trying to get. But the, that doesn't get you a part. No. It nope. doesn't. Wow. It doesn't. Um, and again, she was very talented. That wasn't the, it at all. But it, it just wasn't the right mix yeah. of, of everything. You have to factor out all of those elements right. and not, not right. be swayed, uh, swayed by yeah. our far. That's really hard yeah. for me. I, yeah. I feel the pain. Yeah. And maybe it's because I remember what it was like to not get parts, yeah. right? As I hit my microphone really big right there. Um, huh. And so I understand that mm -hmm. and it makes me feel bad, but I still have to cast the best show yeah. for me, right? Yes. So how many years have you been going to New York to oh, I, actually with I, the agents and the interviews? Well, when you and, count opera, okay. um, I, I've really been doing this for 25 years. 25 and then years. Before that, they were doing, Dr. Gustafson before me was doing it. Decades ago, maybe 40s, 50s. Wow. They, well, they, they would actually, the, the agents would travel around with their singers. So they would come down and they would stop by Bob Jones University and uh, the agent would say, oh, I've got some singers I want you to hear. And they would do the audition. 
here, and things have changed dramatically. Wow. I never did any of them like that, but uh, I did read about yeah. the fact that it was almost like a traveling salesman kind of thing. And let me open my suitcase of singers here and, you know. That's fascinating. Yeah, I had it no really idea is. that they did that. It really is. So is, do you find that the, pro maybe the process is just always changing a little bit, but do you find that the process of searching for that Broadway star different than the process of searching for the person who was gonna come in for the opera? Uh, yes, I mean, obviously, I, in, in opera, I actually specify the uh, arias that I want to hear. Them okay. Because I need to hear if they can hit the high B flat right. in this. Uh, for musical theater, I just say choose um, um, a couple of full-length musical theater numbers and sing your best. I don't pick from the show and okay. ask them to sing a specific song from the show. Sometimes they have. Yeah. Um, our Madame Defarge, she auditioned with the Madame Defarge okay. number mm -hmm. when she came. And she won your heart. She won my heart <laughs> and uh, she was fantastic. And, um, but that's not required. Right. Yeah. Okay. So then what have you learned from actually hiring that talent? Is there anything that mingling with the agents or the talent or having them here? I'm sure the students would say that they've learned a lot. Is there anything mm -hmm. you particularly have well, learned? Well, I think I've, I think I've um, practiced some things that I've learned over the years. And that's, that's when, when those guest artists are coming in, I have a task to do with them. And that is to get this learned up on stage. But I have to do that in a way that enhances my relationship with that person and ultimately enhances the testimony for our God. Mm -hmm. That's very important to me, that our process is as God-honoring as the final product. I love that. And, that's, um, and I think maybe that's why they enjoy it. You know, you, you've got some directors out there in the professional field that just leave a wake of dead bodies behind them, you know, but they, they crank out a terrific show, but no one ever wants to work with, with the, to the director again. Mm -hmm. I am very big on let's, let's accomplish the task, enhance the relationship, and grow our testimony for our God. I love that. Mm -hmm. Enhance the, t what do we, I would I hear those again? Okay, and, and the way I talk about with my class, it's three tennis balls. I'm gonna write it down. Three so. tennis balls you're juggling at any given time. Uh, and I, I usually, when I talk about it, I start with the testimony ball because I okay. think that's most important. So we've got this testimony ball we're throwing up in the air, but then there's a relationship ball that we're throwing up. So we do it, uh, we enhance our relationships. And then third is the task ball. Okay. And you're, you're, you've got to get this thing up on stage and, but, and, and you probably know of directors that, who are very task oriented, mm -hmm. you know, and they do so at the expense of the relationship and their testimony. And sometimes you have, you have folks who are so relationally oriented that they, forget the task. they can't get the task done. Mm -hmm. And so I said, what makes something really effective is the ability to juggle all three of those at the same time. And, and over the years, I have dropped individual tennis balls and you have to pick it back up and get it going again so uh, if if i lose it in a rehearsal because nothing's going right um, i have to r repair that relational damage that's been done if you know if i spoke to someone in a way i shouldn't have so it's about all three it's about all three of those and that's what i mean the process has got to be as God honoring as the final product. That's brilliant. I love it. That's it. If you guys that are listening, if you don't take anything away from this, take that away from you mm -hmm. from this because that was brilliant. Um, lastly, in the hierarchy, and this is for me personally, mm -hmm. because in a community theater setting, sometimes you have people who their feathers get out of sort and they're it, well, let me finish the question. So in the hierarchy of a production, mm -hmm. you have a producer, a director, maybe a music director, maybe a choreographer, your set designer, your costume designer, your technical director, mm -hmm. right? Do, in your opinion and experience, where does the buck start, stop? Did, did, either, did all of those people get to have their own vision and get to say, no, this is my design? Or how do you work with those personalities and everything? Uh, <clears throat> I, I mean, I think, Ultimately, I would say the buck stops with me. I have to work out any conflicts that happen or any 
um, mis misperceptions, all that. That's why up front we, we do a series of meetings with everybody at the table. Um, first meeting we do is a concept meeting where the director is there and presents his or her concept. And everybody has an opportunity to speak up and say, ooh, we really like that idea, but we don't have uh, enough projectors to do that. So if, if we're gonna have, so your technical folks are speaking into the process. Right. Um, and then, you know, if we're gonna do that, then we're gonna have to, to negotiate money in the budget to get new equipment. So I, I think I'm there as a producer to kind of just mitigate any issues that come up. And I may say, well, you know, I get my technical director and my, and my artistic designers uh, together and say, Can, let's hash this out. And, and what I found is most of the time, the technical folks are like, here's what we're capable of doing. If, if we wanna do this, we've got to have this or this. And then we negotiate that. And it's like, okay, um, you start with the essence of the ideal and then you accomplish it within the constraints of your budget and your personnel and the resources that you have. So I just think it's a lot of communication and, mm -hmm. and ultimately, if I have to step in, I, I would say, I, I will say this is what we're gonna do, mm -hmm. but generally we get it resolved in an earlier meeting. Great. Um, so after that concept, we get with a design meeting and then there's more discussion and then finally a final production meeting with everybody at the table and everybody's voice is important, um, but ultimately if someone has to make a decision, I, I will. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Thank you so much. I'm going to give you one last opportunity. Is there anything that you would like to say as a communicator or an artist or a visionary that you'd like to leave with our audience? Yeah, I just think theater um, is such a powerful means of communication. And I, my master's was more in theater. My doctorate is in communication, and, and those those two mesh. Mm -hmm. um, when I'm producing a play or a, 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 an opera or a musical, I'm communicating a message, and I found that um, that is a powerful mechanism for communicating truth mm -hmm. to the audience. So I encourage you, if if you're thinking about theater, um, pursue it and and go into it, and and even if you have an interest. Work your job and you know volunteer to act in a production. Uh, it's it's just a great community building opportunity and appreciate what you've done, Reva, and everything uh, with your theater. And uh, we're proud of you and glad glad you're out there doing doing what you love. Thank you. Thank you so much for spending time with Absolutely. me today. Glad to do it. If you guys have enjoyed this presentation today, this interview, please make sure that you follow us on YouTube and click like. And until next time, this is just me talking to you from the wings.